What is up everybody? Chris from Team Aquascape. I am back here with Jack Pazinski. We are getting ready to start an incredible aqua blue pondless waterfall on this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous rural property out here. We're right at the Illinois-Wisconsin border, about an hour and a half from our shop, and we are gonna make magic back here. You guys ready? Let's go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. All right, guys and girls, we are laying out the reservoir. So we have a 30 large aqua block reservoir. And you can see I have 15 aqua block panels. And the reason I have only 15 and not the 30 is because we are going to double stack these and go deeper with our reservoir. That way we shrink the overall footprint, but we're just gonna go down to hold that volume. So we've got a five aqua block by three aqua block footprint. I'm gonna go ahead and lay some paint on the ground and paint out the perimeter. And then we're gonna go ahead and start digging that. I also wanna recess this down enough below grade to where I can capture the rainwater here, but as well as this downspout all the way over there so i may end up just discharging that in the stream or i'll bring it in and we'll go right in and we'll go ahead and trench a line for the drain tile and we'll bring it in high into the back side of the reservoir here pump vault will probably sit somewhere back over into there an overflow for this system will end up tying back into this dry creek bed that runs the perimeter of this planting bed and goes out to that swale down at the far end of the property so i'm gonna go ahead and get the reservoir marked and we'll start digging we are going to get the truck cleaned out and then we'll put all the spoil that we don't need into the truck and we're gonna drive them over there on site and go between those trees over there and dump everything so should be a pretty smooth project we will end up getting a lot of this scratched out today getting it ready for boulders tomorrow so it's just Jack and I but we're gonna make some serious progress today you know how we do getting things done here on the team aquascape channel let's do it There you have it, we've got a reservoir marked. We're gonna pull these panels up and set them off to the side. We'll end up probably scratching back a lot of that stuff today as well. But we're gonna pull these panels up and start digging this hole. Headway, we've got the reservoir, the whole dog. As you can see, we've dry set 15 of our aqua block panels, actually, technically 14. Jack represents the 15, but we just wanted to make sure while we had everything opened up down here that we had enough room on all sides so that when we put the fabric, liner fabric in, and then the aqua blocks, we weren't going to be fighting any of these walls going all the way down. The pump vault is actually going to sit the second aqua block in from that last row where Jack just pulled out the panel. He's going to go ahead and mark that. We'll get that dug. In the meantime, I'm going to try and keep up with him and get the rest of these. 15 double stacked aqua blocks built. So we've got our aqua blocks um, starting to go into the reservoir right now. We are about four feet above grade here. The, the aqua blocks double stacked the way that they are are about 34 and a half inches or so, 34 to 34 and a half inches tall. So we wanted to make sure that we left plenty of elevation change between the top of the aqua blocks and grade in order to pull off a little bit of a waterfall in here, but also to compensate not only the thickness of the aqua blue boulders that we're gonna use to rock on top of this reservoir, but we also wanted to get the top of our double stacked aqua blocks down below the overflow which is about four inches above the top of these blocks here so this will be able to accept a couple inches of water before it starts to overflow into that dry creek bed the serpentines along that property line all the way back over there that's what we're going to tie in as the overflow so we're going to finish getting the rest of these 15 double stacked large aqua blocks in here and then we'll go ahead and backfill and get this basin nice and money for tomorrow so that we can start off the day fresh and really start plugging away once that rock gets here. Hey everybody, 
we're back. It's day two out here, and we are looking to make some incredible progress. We have a larger team today. We have Jack Danley back. We have Chris Zeschke. We have Juan and myself. Jack P is off doing some other stuff today, but he will be back later on in this episode. You can see we got the guys behind me already demoing all of these cobbles and rock work in here. The idea is, is we are going to start excavating all of this all the way out into here. Or the reason we're doing that is because of access. We don't want to lock ourselves in and get all of this done in through here and then have nowhere to set that machine. Even though it's big and has a long reach, we want to go ahead and work through all of this first so that we can work our way out of this area from underneath the catwalk back towards the reservoir here. And then when we get that done, then we will move up the hill back that way and do that top portion of stream and waterfalls. We've got Moose over here from Brickworks. They've now been rebranded with a lot of the rock and gravel that we're going to use on this project. So he's going to work at staging all the material so that we have everything nice and close and make it very accessible and efficient for us to move it around. So it's going to be a great day. Sun is shining and it's going to be about 60 degrees and we are loving it because it's mid-November here and we don't get these days very often in mid-November in the Chicagoland area. So enough cabin, we're going to get rocking and rolling. first rock of the project. We got this entire area dug out, got fabric and liner in here because we are going to work our way back out this way. You see Juan's up in the machine, perched where he's gonna sit for probably the next hour or two so we can get this whole area rocked in. But we're gonna keep cruising on this. I love the first rock of the project because that is always a benchmark or always a milestone on the project. So excited, excited about that. And it is a gorgeous day, so we're gonna keep going. <laughs> Just a little progress update. Love the progress that we are making. It's a little slow, but we've had a couple moments where we've had to work against some of the challenges on this project. One of the main ones is this catwalk underneath here. So as we talked about earlier in the video, this was where we wanted to kind of work our way out, um, which we did, but the clearance of this thing is only about, about nine feet from where I'm standing. So we've got a very large machine with a large bucket. Fortunately for us, it's got a heck of a long reach and can actually get a lot of weight hanging out there as far as that bucket can reach but we were only able to kind of dig to about here and set the machine in here and then set a lot of that stuff and roll that bucket teeth down to be able to maneuver some of these bigger boulders in through here we've got about a 42 inch boulder here that was intentionally set being this tall to hold back all that grade so to get that boulder in there plus a three foot bucket you know it's not a whole lot of headroom so we just had to be very very careful so it was a little slow going and as I said we had to leave this soil of this area in through here so that we can get the machine out far enough to reach all that stuff. So we got all that stuff set, felt good and happy about it. And then we excavated out this area and then got rid of all that dirt back over there. So this was about three truckloads of dirt in here. Up there was about five. So it's just kind of back and forth, back and forth, but we're doing the best that we can. We ended up spending about the last hour and 20 minutes seaming the two pieces of liner from our basin to our streamliner in through here. And we had to make sure that all the elevations were correct when we start setting the stepping stones in through here, which we are grabbing now. So we're gonna go ahead and work on that and try and get these steps set. And we're gonna do kind of a peekaboo bridge. We've got an elevation change. So we're gonna have to build steps coming down to the bridge element that leads you across and then back up this staircase behind me. So we're gonna work until dark tonight and probably do the same the next night and then the night after that to try and get this thing done by the end of the week. So a little slow going, but it's all those little things that kind of add up. But I still feel confident about 
getting this project done on budget and on schedule and still make it look fantastic. So just wanted to bring you guys up to speed. We're gonna go ahead and set these bridge pieces now before uh, the sun goes down. So this is one of those bridge pieces, Black Hills Rustic Sandstone. It will match up very nicely with a lot of the grays and rust colors that are part of the aqua blues in through here. It just matches up really nice. It's hard to find. So what the guys are trying to do now is find that exact center of weight on the stone so that when we lift up, that thing is nice and plumb, level left to right, as well as front to back, so that when we set it in there, a corner's not diving down, making it very easy for us to shim it up when it's sitting nice and level on the strap as we're setting it into place down into here. We've got some aqua block panels that we're gonna use to kind of vault up the bottom to help build up our elevation. When we set that first stepping stone as part of our bridge element, we want the top of that to meet up to the same height as this stoop or pad that comes down from this staircase in through here. So it's important that you know your elevations and the thickness of these steps as we're going through it. So due diligence is key. That's right, you guys see it, the lights are on and it's only about 4.30 in the evening, but it's getting dark very quickly around here. We got our steps set. You'll see it much better in the daylight when we come back tomorrow, but uh, it looks awesome. I love the peekaboo style bridges. The elevation change we dealt with turned out perfect. It always makes me happy knowing that we did the math good as we were working our way back, engineering kind of what we needed to figure out as far as tread heights and all that stuff, but it looks absolutely spectacular. We have a boatload of work tomorrow and the following day to try and get this thing done by our deadline, but we're gonna get there. I promise you we are going to get there. Now it's time for night night.